Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we welcome our candidates for confirmation. Not this mess, of course. But we're asking you to pray for our candidates each year. But this year, we need all the prayerful support you can give as a community. As we know, this is such a difficult time for everyone, and these children have had to prepare for the sacrament in remote learning with the support of their families. So I ask them now to stand in their homes as we ask our parish community to pray for them as they continue to pray, prepare for their final sacrament of initiation, which is confirmation. The candidates, you young people, have come before us asking us to pray for each and every one of you as you continue to prepare in the sacrament for the sacrament of confirmation. May your hearts be open to the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. May you always be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may sit down at home as we continue now to begin to celebrate the Eucharist. Today we're going to hear of the appointment of Peter to be the leader on earth of the church. And he's given the keys of the kingdom, and we'll hear about the keys in the first reading from the Old Testament. Before we listen to that, let's call to mind the mercy of God. The God who forgave Peter for his failures, the God who forgives us. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have life and have it to the full. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. In our desire for what you promise, make us one in mind and heart. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts to Shechna, the master of the palace. I dismiss you from your office, I remove, remove you from your post, and the same day I call on my servant, Elikam, the son of Hilkiah, and vest him with your robe, 
gird him with your sash, entrust him with your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judea. I place the key of David of the house of David on his shoulder. Should he open, no one shall close. Should he close, no one shall open. I drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a throne of glory for his father's house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Simon, son of Jonah, 
you're a blessed man. Because it's not flesh and blood that reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. So now I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What have you bind on earth? shall be considered bound in heaven and what are you loose on earth will be considered loosed in heaven and Jesus gave the disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ the gospel of the Lord speaking to a lady on the phone and she was saying how she's missing seeing her children and her grandchildren during this pandemic time and she went on to say that she was doing her prayer and meditation each morning we both agreed how blessed we are to have our Christian faith at this time. When Simon Peter makes his act of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a blessed man. Jesus replies that your faith has been revealed to you by my Father in heaven. So it is with all of us. Our faith is a gift from God our Father. We do not earn it. It's a gift from God. Today's Gospel continues with Jesus giving Simon Peter a leadership role in the church. And with this responsibility, Jesus gives him a new name. You, you will now be called Peter. Now, in Greek, the word rock is Petros. So he's really giving him a, a new nickname, Rocky. It's on him that the church will be built. Jesus wants to give us a leader with whom we can identify with our own weaknesses. Peter made his mistakes. When Jesus invited him to walk across the, on the water, Peter took panic, feared drowning. He didn't trust Jesus. Later, when Jesus was on, was on trial on Good Friday, Peter denied three times that he even knew Jesus. But later in his life, in support of prayer, in support of people, Peter gave his life for Christ. He died as a martyr in Rome. In our Gospel today, Jesus continues, You are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. The church will stand firm because it is my church, Jesus says, it belongs to me. We have our worries at the moment about our church in Australia. The Royal Commission into Child Abuse highlighted the failures in the church. We have a lack of priests and religious sisters and brothers. Young people not coming forward. Priests now have three parishes each. And we see opposition to Pope Francis from rich, vested interests. Saintly priest 
Greece in France about 350 years ago. At that time, the leadership of the church in France was by rich and corrupt bishops. Actually, a cardinal was running the country, even waging wars. The poor were not cared for, priests were poorly formed, and this saint, John Hughes, brought in changes. The church survives because the church is Christ's. So let us put our trust in God during this present crisis of the coronavirus. The church has survived through the Black Plague, through world wars, through Hitler and Stalin. We don't know how we'll come out of this coronavirus. After the Second World War, empires disappeared and new nations emerged. Life in Australia changed. There were more roles for women. Back in the 19th century, the potato famine in Ireland meant a lot of Irish came to Australia, including my great grandmother, Catherine. So things will change. Today, you children who are preparing to receive the sacrament of confirmation have been asked to put your trust and faith in God that in the future, sometime, you will receive the saint of the Holy Spirit because it's Christ's church, not ours, and will stand firm. Now I invite the candidates for confirmation with their parents or guardians to please stand at home. They shall hear this telecast. These young candidates have asked that they complete their initiation into the sacramental life of the church. Parents and guardians, do you consider them willing and ready to complete their initiation in the Christian community? Have they faithfully listened to God's word? Candidates, your parish community and your parents have spoken in your favour, and therefore the Church, in the name of Christ, accepts their judgment and calls you for full participation in the life of the Church. So I ask you, do you wish to enter fully into the life of the Church through the Sacrament of Confirmation? You have received a pin with the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's often talked about in the Gospel as a dove. So I invite you to wear that with pride as you continue to journey towards the Sacrament for Confirmation. In communion with all those holy men and women who have gone before us, with our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world, let's now confess our faith that we received from the Apostles as we pray together our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today we pray in the psalm, Lord, your love is eternal. Let us now confidently place these petitions to our loving God. That those who serve the Church as leaders will be faithful and courageous. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis will use the keys of the kingdom to unlock God's teaching for us. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the children who have chosen to receive the sacrament of confirmation in the future 
will be given the gift of trust in God. In faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those suffering illness, poverty and loneliness during the coronavirus will be given adequate support. In faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of government around the world will make decisions wisely and justly. In faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will be shown the healing light of Christ, especially Colin Beard, Karma Corbin, Dale Maher, Matty McGuire, Father Bernard O'Brien, Lucy Perkins, Trevor Salter, and Rebus. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will be raised to new life with Christ, especially Pat Patrick Bricknell, John Fogarty, Ron Gill, Rita McGotto, Chris Telfer, and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, especially Pat Price and Mary Victor. May they rest in eternal peace. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join together in our parish prayer. God, God our Father, Father bless this is parish of our Lady of our Heart, so that we may love you more. Help the parents to be a good example to their children and their youth to grow in strength as good Christians. We encircle our families with your loving care. To the sick grant health, to the age bring serenity, and to those in sorrow joy. May we grow stronger in faith, and may our love for one another become deeper in our daily living. Friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, give graciously to us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In keeping with that theme in the Gospel that God's Kingdom will come, that nothing will ultimately stop it, we think of how God is guiding us today on the way of salvation. That's the theme of our Eucharistic prayer today. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty God, source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as with our end we sing. on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, all bishops, priests and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, 
and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Anne and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. we became part of the family of God with God as our Father. The new candidates will confirm that again at your confirmation. And so to the Father of us all, the Father of Jesus, let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Our prayer for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's give each other at home a sign of peace and a nod you to peace here. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And so, as we're not able to receive Holy Communion at this stage, we'll now pray and receive God spiritually as we pray this prayer together, written by Pope Francis. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. explosion in Beirut. 200 people were killed and thousands have lost their houses and a lot of suffering. Our Catholic Church is involved in helping bring in relief and normally we would have a leaving collection at this time to support uh, that work. During last Tuesday night our parish finance team voted to send $2,000 uh, as a donation to help that relief work. Tonight at five o'clock uh, this afternoon, Sunday afternoon, there is a, a prayer service organised by all the suffering churches. We had a meeting a couple of weeks ago by Zoom, of course, and um, so if you look at the suffering churches website, there's a prayer for all the Christians of Sunbury are praying, particularly in this Corona time. Hope you have a good week as we move nearly halfway through this lockdown time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. God. 